Hello and welcome. The vaccines are now being rolled out, beginning with the United Kingdom and then the United States and Canada, where large batches of uh, vaccines are being delivered to 50 states or to hospitals. And a lot of people, beginning with high-risk uh, healthcare professionals, are being administered, at least in the United States. Interestingly enough, a survey in the United States has said that almost 25% of people will probably or definitely not take the vaccines. So what are the concerns about vaccines? What's the counter view to uh, vaccines? And clearly, we're not hearing too many of them. So let's get one view from here in India. To do that, I'm joined by Dr. Govardhan Das, Professor of Molecular Medicine at the JNU. Dr. Das, pleasure to speak to you. How are you seeing the rollout of the vaccine at this point of time, given that most vaccines in India will only likely be administered in maybe eight to, eight to, six, eight to 12 weeks from now? Okay, uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit of um, uh, what kind of vaccine right now is available. The, the three types of vaccine right now, one is uh, adenovirus-based vaccine and the others is mRNA uh, vaccine and the third one is the one the, which uh, Indian uh, Bharat Biotech is developing, which is uh, inactivated uh, vaccine. So I have concerned uh, all three of them in num number one, adenovirus vaccine, as we all know, adenovirus uh, uh, vector always has the risky. Risky, that's because of adenovirus is known to cause demyelination, which is basically what we see, uh, as you saw there are, uh, during the phase three cl clinical trial, at least some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, right. the uh, participants, they got the, some degree of, uh, you know, neurological disease. So as you know, de demyelination effect, it may not, you know, cause any harm today, but in long term, in a, after 10 years or 15 years, there may be some um, problem. So I have reservation in adenovirus-based vaccine. Second problem will be in these vaccines, as you know, this is uh, COVID-19, they do not, they are not making memory response. That means what they are, pri after primary response, um, you know, after uh, two months or so, the antibody responses and cellular responses are going down. So basically, in sp even if we give them this uh, um, recombinant uh, COVID-19 proteins, uh, how long their uh, memory response will sustain, I have a really reservation, unless they have shown categorically is a long-term safety and long-term uh, efficacy. So I, once again, I have reservation on uh, um, adenovirus-based vaccines. Second uh, uh, one is coming is the mRNA-based vaccine, which is Pfizer uh, and all is uh, giving the vaccine. The one thing I can tell you, the mRNA-based vaccine, they once again, there's a, uh, their delivery system is lipid. And then because of that lipid and the mRNA, you can get this some kind of immune response, primary immune response very quickly. And after that, because of the lack of antigenicity and lack of um, sustained, uh, you know, um, dose or sustained immune response, I don't think they are going to make memory. So basically what you see, the most of the cases, um, people are just jumping around, oh, we got the antibody, but how long it is sustaining, that is questionable, number one. Number two, right. in mRNA vaccine, so far in history, the mRNA vaccine never been used and never been tested. So I am I have reservation for that. This is in long term. Is right now we are getting effect. That's good. But long term, with how much we'll get it, I have reservation. Number three, uh, the one is the um, one. I'll take just you know, twenty seconds. Yeah, right, right. Go ahead. Vaccine, which is attenuated vaccine, which is. Bharat Biotech, it all is uh, developing. As we all know, the uh, original, the COVID-19, the immune response they are generating, but they are not really stable. Within two months, they are going down. So therefore, even if we attenuated, it may not work. Is primary uh, response we may get, we may not get, get, get the memory response. So that is my uh, reservation. Yes. Right. Okay. So now uh, the vaccines are going to be uh, administered because I'm, I'm. I mean, I guess like the rest of the world, there is no choice. Uh, and uh, so, are you saying the option is between not taking a vaccine and taking a vaccine, or choosing which type of vaccine to take? 
as for it so let me tell you the right now what we have is basically number of cases is gone down almost like a 20000 per uh, you know per day in at okay. least in india okay. and the by this time probably we, uh, we and the 95% cases among these are absolutely no 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 problem basically they get the mild symptoms and go away so basically if there is immune response generated because of that infection that will continue and uh, whatever the uh, time period and third thing the issue is because of wide spread of wide um, uh, you know uh, exposure probably by this time already we got the herd immunity so why do we need the vaccine which is uh, safety and efficacy is not really well tested number 1 number 2 if all whole world right now is looking for the bcg as you know the bcg is a 100 year old vaccine and been well tested in every population so the i was the first person in the world to talk about the bcg and bcg is probably safe and bcg should work at the it is been tested is it, it it works right so i don't th- to me in my opinion we don't need a vaccine if at all probably the bcg is the best option for the time being right and 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 the the bcg uh, and i mean you know they are, there is uh, circumstantial evidence perhaps that bcg has worked but bcg is also administered in childhood i mean is it, is that something that you can administer later in life and even assuming well, it works there are uh, there are uh, several um, uh, publications now including yeah. the paper in cell and the uh, the uh, at least three more papers i saw the data is coming of even the the bcg is safe in elderly and in cell paper at least i i, I saw that probably is the efficacy is more than 80% and the another study i can uh, i i uh, must be paper is out reviewed uh, some time back the in uae they have shown they have taken the elderly population and uh, immunized with the revaccinated with bcg and they have shown those who received bcg they they found zero cases on the other hand there are at a 6% people those who did not take bcg in the regular population they got the covid-19 infection suggesting that once again bcg working and bcg is safe for the elderly population but uh, in a country like india now are you saying that the cases that we've had so far those who have contracted it and uh, we've obviously had several million those are people uh, who may not have taken bcg in the past or well this is it's not um, uh, what i believe although probably um, experimentally not proven what we have already bcg mediated immunity and thereafter as you know as i keep on saying in several um, interviews that uh, we, uh, india is a low hygiene index country uh, less hygiene index country we are continuously being exposed with various organisms that includes environmental mycobacteria that may keep on our immune system to 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 you know replenish so therefore we are we are uh, probably safe indeed uh, if you look at till date the number of uh, uh, people the affected and the mortality per million population we are much lower than the um, uh, many countries including uk us and so on and so forth okay let me let me put the question a little differently i mean uh, if i would to go along with your argument it is true that and a lot of sero prevalence studies have shown that uh, there are very very high instances including the one uh, 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 dr rath worked on in pune uh, which showed that uh, you know a lot of people or far more than believed had developed immunity already so if if that was the case then uh, how do you see the progression of the disease particularly let's say in the last in the in the next 3 months Uh, uh where you know i mean the world is at tend to hooks at this point uh should we be going ahead with a vaccine uh, uh all out vaccine strategy which i guess we are either ways uh, or will uh, the sero prevalence uh, move at such a speed then we may not need it at all well i mean if i uh, for vaccine if my personal opinion i am not trying to um, uh, advocate for anybody or i am not trying to you sure. know um, recommend but in my personal opinion right at this moment we really do not need a vaccine so that is the bottom line that's because 
already number of cases gone down and the number number two those who um, are especially those who do not have the um, what do you call it the comorbidity so they are not really uh, much affected and the uh, symptoms and those who are exposed symptoms is coming and coming a very uh, low symptoms and then this going away so basically we really do not need much of precaution however those who have the comorbidity they have to be very careful and also probably if vaccine needed instead of um, you know all those kind of uh, vaccines probably i'll rather go for the uh, you know bcg type of uh, vaccine policy right. Right. Okay. So, uh, if if we were to now look ahead, uh, one of the factors that's working against these new vaccines is their uh, is their age or uh, or their vintage. The fact that they haven't been around for so long. They've all been found and uh, tested and rolled out in barely seven or eight months. So, assuming we have the benefit of time, uh, would you then change your position or stance on these vaccines? Well, I mean, if I get the data of ten years, definitely. so science is always kind of a it goes in a theory and then either prove yourself or disprove yourself basically right. if i uh, in 10 years i see this is the uh, covid 19 specific uh, t cells are uh, you know memory t cells are uh, still stored and covid 19 specific antibodies secreting the b cells are uh, memory b cells are, uh, is is there and the uh, the uh, the recipient is protected from the covid 19 the absolute fine but i also then i also have the other um, uh, concern that safety as i said is a uh, adenovirus based vaccine as you know so basically those vaccines the may may be the cause for the several neurological diseases so that side by side that is also we have to you know um, uh, we have to consider so basically you have to you know weigh balance between the benefits and the uh and the what do you call it um, uh, the uh, safety whatever we are talking about right anyway so uh, i mean i guess the bottom line is that uh, you have to take care uh, you have to uh, take the preca- take precautions particularly if you have comorbidities and uh, do not take uh, anything for granted because vaccine or not uh, this disease uh, is a deadly one uh, dr gopardan das thank you so much for joining me thank you thank you so much for having me